It's been 12 months since we've had the super trucks on track, but the big rigs are back in action at the nation's spectator track Wakefield Park this weekend. Hi everyone, Lockie Mansell here, all set for the opening round of the 2022 High Tech Oils Australian Super Truck Nationals. Gary O'Brien joins me in commentary, and Gary, it's fantastic to have the big rigs back on track. It certainly is. It's been uh, a year to the day almost that we've last seen these trucks out and racing. We had a bit of wet weather on Saturday, but Sunday's looking great. Some of the iconic names of super truck racing are going to be competing this weekend. Let's head down to the paddock, find out what they're thinking ahead of this weekend's racing. Yeah, no, it's good. It's a, uh, I've got here to do it almost, but um, it's been a while. Um, we've uh, had a good start, I suppose, with qualifying. And on the first one, it was sort of wet. We set the truck up um, for wet weather, which was, which was a safe bet, I suppose. But um, it's drying out today, so we'll make a few changes and see how we go. Yeah, it's a good track. It's, it's interesting when there's uh, creeks going across the uh, couple of corners, so it's a bit hard to judge where your braking's going to be. It's, but um, anyway, yeah, it's good. It's been a long off season, as you could probably call it. Um, we've done a little bit of development to the truck. It hasn't quite worked what we wanted to, so we're um, just on a little bit of a patch up today, but we'll just see how it goes, you know. Shannon's really brought his truck out cracking, so I'm um, super stoked for his team, but um, it's given us a bit of a benchmark to try and chase. So had a failure of the gearbox yesterday and um, put it in last night. Went out in the warm up, it's pretty quick, so we'll just see what happens, though. It's nice and dry today, so different, different ball game. The only thing we've really done to the truck is uh, I, I imported some, some uh, 260cc injectors in from America. We've put them in and uh, gives a little bit more power. Unfortunately, a little bit more smoke. We we're trying to limit the smoke and um, we'll see how we go. It was unfortunate about the pandemic, but it gave us a bit more time to sort of learn and, and grow, so yeah, we're, we're back and ready to go again. We've had some terrific help, uh, we've got terrific sponsors, Beanley Truck Parts, the boys there are just outstanding. Without them, it's, it just hasn't been, wouldn't be possible. The, the knowledge and expertise they have is just fantastic and, and they're right behind me. The COVID's got to stay away, we, we, we need to come and play. Uh, my only problem is that uh, we had it all prepared and ready, everything was cool and uh, I developed an oil leak a fortnight ago and we had to pull the gearbox and the ballast and out there. Anyway, we fixed the plug, that was okay. Yesterday, uh, Friday actually, we found that the rocker box wasn't getting any oil, so it's, it's spun a cam bush. So we've done a bit of a bush mechanics job in it, pulled the shaft out and put some anti seeds in it, and uh, fingers crossed it'll stay together for the weekend. No, we're not going to have the same problems today. Um, we've gone back to just a single turbo for this round. We'll be going back to twins for the next round because Lincoln's a bit tight and we need that quicker boost. We're struggling to get it on boost at the moment with a single turbo, but it's doing all right, and as long as it runs around and picks up some points today, we'll be happy. All the drivers in their trucks ready to go racing, including the veteran, the legend, the 2014 series champ, Frank Amoroso. We had race one for the trucks yesterday afternoon. Gary, give us a bit of a rundown on what happened in the opening race. Well, to start with, qualifying didn't go the way we expected. Steve Zammett, who's been on pole for since Adam was a boy almost, just didn't have it. And Shannon Smith actually topped him for pole and actually won the first race ahead of uh, Zammett. And in third spot was uh, Barry Bartle. Well, it was an impressive performance from Shannon Smith because he also held on to win at race number one. Shannon Smith, effectively what you would describe as the reigning champion because they won the last fully completed Super Truck Championship in 2019. And the grid positions for this race are going to be based on how they finished in at race number one earlier on. So it will be Shannon Smith and Steve Zammett who will share the front row of the grid. It's been really good, hard, but clean and fair racing between those two in the recent past as we have a look at the rest of the grid positions. Barry Butwell in the Max Superliner. He's always quick. Watch out for Mark Noonan. It's a freshly restored truck. He'll line up on the outside of the second row. Great game, Moroso. Takes, uh, takes up position five. Max Pruwich in the Mac out of six. Robbie Fern, Lachlan Fern, Mark Schutz and Mitchell Pruitt round out our ten. 
indeed the three Isuzu light trucks there at the back of the field but the trucks they always put on a great show whenever they roll into Wakefield Park and we always get a very healthy crowd of spectators turning out to watch these big rigs in action as well we're set for a six lap sprint race in beautiful weather conditions there's been a lot of rain lately as there has right throughout New South Wales but fine conditions for the trucks here at Wakefield Park this weekend as they come down to the start finish line for the double fire rolling start and it's Smith versus Savitt as they take the green flag big puddle of water there Savitt to the outside on the run down into turn number two another puddle of water that they have to negotiate their way through and it's Savitt who gets a bit sideways and that will allow Shannon Smith to take the lead on the run up the hill. Yeah more like a river of water running across in those two places going into turn two but as you can see, it's Smith in front from Zamet in second. Butler holds up third. Amoroso getting all out of shape as he chases the Max Superliner across the top of the track. A trademark sideways moment there from Frank Amoroso. We know that he always really likes to hustle his super truck around the track, and it's spectacular to watch. But the two leaders of Shannon Smith and Steve Zamet have cleared out. Barry Butwell, the Max Superliner, has very good handling. It's always very quick over the top part of the circuit. He's slotted into third position and we look out the back and we see that Frank Amoroso is engaged in a ding-dong battle with the second of the Max Superliners driven by Marcus Prilwitz. Yeah, with Butwell this weekend running a single turbo on that truck as opposed to the twin setup that he's ran in the past. And he's a bit keen on just running this thing in and just seeing how it's going to run. So if he isn't up the front, that'd be the reason why. Yeah, the twin turbo engine that he had previously, it was very powerful, but they were also having some reliability issues with it. So I think going to the single turbo setup, but we will be looking for a bit more reliability as we see that Amoroso in the Fate Race in Kenworth closes in on the main straight. The super trucks are limited, of course, Gary, to a top speed of 160 kilometres an hour, but there's still time to be gained based on acceleration and how quickly you can get up to that top speed. And also under the braking uh, markers as well, just what you can do. But it's a great battle going on behind, but we'll hear with uh, Amoroso and the second of the Max there battling it out for position and even further back, there's even more going on. Good battle here as well. So Marcus Prilwitz is under pressure from Mark Noonan in the Scania and Robbie Fern, the Volvo, buying its way into the contest as well as we see Noonan looking down on the inside of Prilwitz on the run into the Fishhook. Really beautifully turned out truck, that Scania of Mark Noonan. It sat pretty much derelict in a paddock for a couple of decades. It was previously raced by Mark's father, Brian Noonan, but it's been beautifully restored and it's running very competitively so far this weekend. They're very keen to uh, for forge out a, a future in truck racing and he's looking at different lines there, taking a very wide entry to try and get the run back on the inside he even takes a bit of the curve as he does it but it hasn't quite got right there although has he? He has now as he gets under power down the straight Excellent switchback maneuver there from Mark Noonan, you can see that he just braked a bit earlier on the run into turn 10 and focused on nailing the exit he was able to get the overlap and in the end he made the move to get past Marcus Prilwitz before they even got to the start finish line. So Mark Noonan up in position, now putting the pressure on Frank Amoroso. Is that a grin that I can see on Amoroso's face behind the wheel? I think he's always in a fairly <laughs> good position, happy-wise. And you can see he's just keeping an eye on where, where the opposition's coming from and uh, very relaxed by the look of it. He's always a very jovial character out of the truck. Frank Amoroso loves his truck racing. He's been he's been an integral part of the super truck scene since its inception way back in the late 1980s. Let's take another look at this switchback manoeuvre from Mark Noonan coming through turn 10. He was right on the extreme left of the circuit at the turning point. And this is one of the reasons that he was able to get up alongside. Marcus Prilwitz had a big slide coming out of turn number 10. That would have cost him a lot of exit momentum. Mark Noonan said thank you very much. Here we have on a, through. another look at it. Took the curb, and uh, we didn't see this so much from our camera vi vision of it, but Pruitt's got all sideways and lost momentum. So the two leaders, Shannon Smith and Stephen Zammett, they've pulled away. Barry Butwell still holding down third position. Frank Amoroso in fourth spot with Mark Noonan right behind him. And then we go back to Marcus Prilwitz for being the next one through with Robbie Fern 
not too far behind him. And Mark Noonan on a bit of a charge. He gets the run on Amoroso up the hill. He'll be on the wrong side of the road when they get to the left-hander at turn number three. Difficult to make an outside manoeuvre work in these trucks and Amoroso holds on to that spot for the time being. But Mark Noonan looking very racy in that Scania, Gary. He certainly is. And uh, Frank Amoroso, by the same token, is not going to let him have it easy. And uh, stuck to his guns going through turn three and it's meant that he's come out on top and still leads the young charger. We know that Frank Amoroso is very hard drives and pass at the best of times. Trucks... I mean, they're, they're obviously very wide vehicles and there's never a lot of space when you're following one closely, but Amoroso always puts on a bit of a masterclass in defensive driving as we see that uh, it's a bit more of a concentrated yeah, look on Amoroso's face now. <laughs> I, I can say he's lost that grin because he's actually got to put his head down and do a bit of hard work now. And Pruitt's again trying to look for that manoeuvre at turn 10. It worked for him in the past. He tries to pull out. We'll see if he's close enough to get the job done. Not quite at this stage, and I dare, dare say that Frank will pull across into turn one and hold the spot. Right on the breaking threshold, both of them down into turn two. Mark Noonan again looking for the, the good drive up the hill, but not able to get alongside Amoroso as he was on the previous lap. And actually, Frank has managed to pull a little bit of a gap on that occasion in their run to turn three. Now it's up to young Noonan to see if he can get this spot back as they head across the top of the track. Down with one lap to go after this one. His time's starting to run out and actually the gap is starting to uh, go out even further. Indeed it is and that's because Mark Noonan made a bit of a mistake up the top of the hill at turn four where he ran wide on the exit and that just allowed Amoroso to skip away a couple of truck lengths. But here comes our race leader Shannon Smith to commence what will be the final lap of this race and he's done a good job in this race Shannon Smith of just managing the margin back to Steve Zammett Shannon Smith as I mentioned the champion back in 2019 aboard that truck, the one that was formerly owned and campaigned by John Bomberley. Yeah and um, actually he's probably sending a bit of a statement here to Steve Zammett who's been king of the trucks for a long time now that maybe the, the power is starting to shift. Which is a good thing for the truck racing category. We want to see as many competitive trucks up the front and flying for race wins as we can. And Stephen Zammett with six titles, he's certainly been the dominant performer in the truck championship for a number of seasons now. But it's good to see the likes of Shannon Smith and, and others like Barry Butwell taking the fight up to him. And uh, I'm hearing reports, Gary, that there's other new trucks that are going to be hitting the track in the not too distant future as well. So. Hopefully we'll get fields of 15 plus trucks on the grid and uh, have you know a good variety of different drivers fighting it out at the front of the field. Yeah, it's certainly going to be good. And the likes of Lockie Fern and Marcus Prilwich and Frank Ambroso even, you know, they've always been competitive. We just need to step up that little bit more. But at the moment, coming around to take the checkered flag will be Shannon Smith. Two races so far this weekend and two victories. Chased all the way to the chequered flag by Stephen Zavitt. The margin between those two, just under three seconds as they take the chequered flag. And then a fairly big gap back to this contest for position three. Barry Butwell will get the honours there. Frank Amoroso, he was challenged for several laps by Mark Noonan, but he has been able to hold on for fourth position. Marcus Prilwitz, the second of the Max Superliners, will be next coming home in position six. So confirmation of the race results then and Shannon Smith, as you mentioned, Gary, two wins from two races ahead of Zammert and Butwell, Amoroso, Noonan, Prilwitz, Robbie Fern ahead of his son Lachlan Fern with Mark Schultz and Mitchell Prilwitz rounding out our 10 finishes. Thank you, yeah, no, the truck went really well. It's, uh, yeah, it still kept the setup as for a wet track, so it's starting to dry up a little bit more traction, so just uh, harden the suspension up a little bit more to try and get better out of the corners. Just uh, how big you want to uh, take the gamble when you break the corner, so sort of breaks before the puddle or the creek, breaks after it. Yeah, um, we're just doing our normal routine. We, we circulate our brakes. We've always put cold ones in before we went out, and we found a little bit of a fault line in one of the liners, uh, in one of the um, rotors, sorry, and um, cleaning them out. It's actually blown right through and cracked all the inside, so um, I was pushing pretty hard on that race. Um, I sort of got Shannon at the start there, and I couldn't quite see him on the inside, and it's a little bit too early in the year to start battling for real estate, so... 
we sort of went down turn one together, which is pretty clean, and uh, that thing's just got some horsepower, just couldn't keep up with it. So, but we sort of don't think we done the quickest stuff in the race, but just can't keep up with him at the start. So, uh, full credit to him for the race win. Yeah, yeah, it has. We just haven't got the acceleration out of the corners. They got the pace on us, but anything can happen in racing. So, third is we're really happy with it. We're really happy with that. That's um, good. And if we can stay in that position for the day. They make a mistake, we capitalise. The first couple of laps was all right, and then that, what I was telling you about that rocket was starting to catch them. I get a misfire every now and then, and that's why they caught me back up, and then it come good, and it actually pulled away again. But uh, yeah, no, there was a bit of a, a tangle up there with uh, with Mark actually, but uh, we come out right there. So we went up one spot. We went up from uh, fifth, starting in fifth and finished in fourth. So. Yeah, Frank, that's the widest can work in the world, I reckon. He, he knows how to protect the corner, but. Um, we actually are quicker than Frank, but maybe we just couldn't get around him cleanly and I'm not going to take him out of myself. I'm going to race clean and we'll have a go on the next one. Shannon Smith, he's the man they're all chasing so far in 2022, but we're going to throw a joker into the pack. We've got the reverse grid race coming up next. What will happen then? We'll find out after the break. Everybody's been hanging out. I've all been getting his phone calls <laughs> you know, from the trucks. And we've got 10 trucks here this weekend, and they're all still running. Uh, we could have had 13 trucks, but there was a couple, a couple of hiccups with some other teams. So 13 trucks is a big field, and that's what we're expecting at Winton in July. 13 trucks. They're big, and if they touch each other or rub each other, as they call rub, uh, racing is rubbing, right? Um, they don't get hurt as bad. So there's a lot more of that sort of stuff. So it's, a bit, it's, it's exciting. It's exciting. If you had a look at the last race, mate, there's biffing and barging and carrying on. No one's have a problem. Fix your problem. Get racing again. And that's what people love. Yeah, we've sort of been talking to the boys for a while. We've been doing it for a few years, so we thought, you know what, we just keep going. Out of COVID now, which is great. The business is good. These guys support what we do, so we're supporting them. We're doing a lot of uh, looking around and sponsoring a few different things now to put our brand out there. We know we're pretty good out there, but we just want to enforce it a little bit more. We have over 1,500 line items on our list, so we do all your truck washes, degreasers, or anything, anything you need in oil, we can help you out with. Fantastic that high-tech oils have thrown their support behind the Australian Super Truck Nationals for another year. Gary and uh, George Gandino, very passionate about all different types of motorsport, but he particularly loves categories that put on a show for the spectators. And Charlie Zammett as well, uh, how passionate, being the president of Antro, that he would be involved in this as well and uh, is looking towards a positive future. Indeed it is, and things are about to heat up on track because we've got race three coming up and the grid positions for this race will be a full inversion of the finishing positions from race number two. So we've got the light trucks occupying the top three positions. Young uh, Mitchell Prilwitz, son of Marcus Prilwitz, starting on pole position. Also Lachlan Fern and Mark Schutz inside the top three as well. And the fast drivers who featured at the front of the field in races one and two, well, they're going to have to fight their way through from the back of the pack. And this is where the excitement builds because you've got to find your way past and not everyone's making it easy. So here are your grid positions. Mitchell Prilwitz and Lachlan Fern on the front row. Mark Schutz out of position three. Robbie Fern will go from fourth in the Volvo back then to Marcus Prilwitz and Mark Luna. Frank Amoroso and Barry Butwell out of position seven and eight. Stephen Zammett and our race two winner Shannon Smith rounding out your top ten. Big guns are off the back, so look forward to seeing what they do coming through the field. There is Lachlan Fern sporting the very distinctive hairdo. He'll line up on the outside of the front row. Good to see some of the young guns getting involved in truck racing. Sons of guns. Sons of guns, as it were. And now we have a rolling start set in their way for this reverse grid race three of the weekend. So Mitchell Prilwitz in that Isuzu SBR light truck on the front row of the grid. The light trucks are not as powerful as the super trucks, but they are quite nimble. 
certainly capable of holding their own, particularly over the top part of the circuit. Away we go for race number three. Excellent start from Mark Schultz. He pulls across to the front of Mitchell Frillwitz, but there's contact. Schultz gets turned around. Frillwitz trying to recover, but gets collected by Robbie Fern. Marcus Frillwitz up on the outside. And Mitchell Prillwitz now spins out as well. He would have got garbage all over his tyres. And great evasive action there from Stephen Zammett, who just managed to avoid collecting Mitchell Prillwitz. Look at the amount of mud on Mitchell Prillwitz's windscreen. He's going to have severe visibility issues for the rest of this race. And unfortunately, Mark Schultz's ground for holds at turn two. Looks like we might have to have a restart of this, although the race continues at the moment. As we watch him go down through the top part of the track down towards turn eight. And I think we'll find that uh, at the front at the moment is uh, Lachlan Fern in leading the way with Mark Noonan in second and they've slowed right up here. So we've got a safety car situation and we'll give us time to digest what has actually happened down at turn two. Yeah, good decision there for the officials to bring out the safety car. Obviously Mark Schultz's truck stuck in a pretty precarious position there at turn two. Here is the high-tech oils replay, and you can see that Mark Schutz starting out of position three got a really good start, but it was just a case there, Gary, of three into one do not go. Schutz yeah. pulled across there to try and assume the racing line through turn one, but there was Nizuzu parked on his right-hand side. Yeah, it looked like the um, a matter of moving over and not realising that there was someone still there. Case two for... Uh, Burn, unfortunately getting caught up here. Here's a, a different view of the situation. And, uh, well, he was a fair way in front of him, wasn't he? We didn't see on that front shot. And then Fern gets brushed aside, basically, as we see Pruitt send spin out of turn two. And, as you said, Steve Zammett, very lucky to get away with getting through that. Here's a shot from Pruitt, and he got a bump almost immediately. And then you can see the recourse of what's happened there. Oh. Oh, he almost got away with that as well, Mitchell Prillwitz, but it was coming out of turn number two when he gassed it up. He found that there was just no grip, and I think that's probably because he had some rubbish on his tyres. Here's what it looks like on board with Mark Schutz. And you're right, Gary, it was just a case of Mark Schutz moving across while there was still overlap with Mitchell Prillwitz. The fact that Lachlan Fern was taking quite a tight line wouldn't have helped either. Indeed not. Here's a shot from Steve Zammett. Now, he was probably the luckiest one out of all of this. See, he comes here. We won't be aware of what's happened until about now. And then not sure about where to go. And particularly now, when he can't even see where he's going, <laughs> makes it even worse, doesn't it? And this is the bit that would have caught him by surprise. Out of turn two. And, oh, wow. I think, was there actually contact there? Hard to tell. <laughs> hard to, yeah, hard to actually be able to see. But good job from the officials to get Mark Schutz's truck recovered from the circuit. The lights are out on the Hyundai Kona N safety car, and we are set for a race start. And they'll be coming down to complete lap number two. And Lachlan Fern, you would have to say, was the big beneficiary out of all of that because he was able to get to the race lead and he will restart in position one. He probably wasn't even aware of what happened because he would have been down into turn one while it was all going on behind him. But at the moment, he now leads as we restart this race. And he's ahead of Mark Noonan in second, Amoroso in third, and wow, Steve Salmon off the track at turn one, comes to, no, not Salmon, that was Shannon Smith that was off the track at turn one, but gets it back on track as they head up the hill. He was trying to go around the outside of Marcus Prillwitz on the run down through turn number one, but he got out into the marbles. There was no grip, and uh, in the end, fortunate to get away with that one without losing too much time. But you know, it is Lachlan Fern who leads the way. Very well-driven truck of Mark Moon and up there in second position, but under pressure from Frank Hammeroso. And here is Stephen Zammett on the charge, putting the pressure on Robbie Fern as they head down into the fish hook. And he goes down the inside, he'll get this spot done. And that's what it's all about. And that's where Steve Zammett's been so good. Getting through the field, getting up towards the front runners. And that's why he is a six times Australian national truck champion. Robbie Fern left the door well and truly open there. So it was a fairly comfortable move in the end for Steve Zammett. As we see that he's going to get another spot here on the run into the final corner at turn number 10. Down the inside of Marcus Prillwitz. So Steve Zammett on an absolute charge. 
already up to fourth position and we've still got three laps left to run here. So Fern continues to lead away, the younger of the two, but Chris Noonan, I beg your pardon, Chris Noonan's son Mark Noonan has him any sights wanting to get past. You probably won't get him down here at turn two, but I think he'd be a good chance going up the hill. Those trucks get their power down so much quicker out of the corners. And we see that Mark Noonan indeed does make the move heading up the hill towards turn number three. And in fact, Lachlan Fern might lose another spot here because Frank Amoroso is going to go the long way around the outside and pulls off that manoeuvre as well. So Lachlan Fern in the space of two corners loses two spots. Shannon Smith gets into the back of Stephen Zammett, the two title contenders banging panels on the run down the hill. So now we have... Mark Noonan out in front, Frank Amoroso in second, and wouldn't break love a win. We watch Shannon Smith now going around the outside of Lockie Fern down to turn eight, up towards turn nine. So he's made progress, and actually he's got in front of Zammett, which we may have missed what we've seen him. He was pushing to get past, but he obviously must have made the move work. He has indeed. So Zammett goes back a spot and Frillwitz now comes down the inside of Lachlan Fern as well. Here's a replay. This was Shannon Smith just after that safety car restart. So it was actually light contact there with the back of Marcus Frillwitz. And that was what caused Shannon Smith to get carted off the road down there at turn one. But he's recovered strongly, like just said, back up ahead of his main rival, Stephen Zammett. The other thing that's not helping things at the moment, Gary, we do have those rivers running across the track, so it's predominantly dry, but there are a couple of sections where you do get that standing water on the circuit, and the drivers are going to find that the grip level deteriorates quite significantly when they hit those sections of the circuit. Well, Shannon Smith certainly uh, looking like he wants to win this race. He's on the back of Amoroso now, and Noonan can't seem to shake him either, so this is going to be a tight freeway battle to the flag. Shannon Smith has shown genuine speed and racecraft so far this weekend. Winner of races one and two, and in this race he's managed to get himself up into the top three. But Stephen Zammett's going to muscle his way through now as well. It's a four-way battle for the lead. Shannon Smith muscles Stephen Zammett out high and wide. Gets a good run out of turn number nine. Frank Amoroso seems to have slowed up a bit on the straight, and Shannon Smith just manages to avoid making contact with the back of the number 96 machine. And in fact, Amoroso is coming to the pit, so clearly a problem there for the 2014 champion. What a shame having to pull out of what was a fantastic contest for the race win. Yeah, he's uh, obviously talking to the crew there at that happening. But in the meantime, Noonan leads, Smith in second, Zamet up the third spot. And one lap to go, and you get the feeling that this is shaping up for a pretty intense dice between these three trucks. Shannon Smith, excellent drive out of turn number two for the run up the hill. He closes in on Mark Noonan. Time running out, overtaking opportunities running out, and Shannon Smith is throwing everything at the back of Mark Noonan on this last lap. He's already had two race victories so far this weekend, starting from pole position. He's got half a lap to try and find a way past Mark Noonan to make it a perfect score. But he has to be careful because he's got a very enthusiastic Steve Zammett lined up behind. He goes to the outside of Mark Noonan. He's going to try and go the long way round, but he's not going to pull it up. Shannon Smith, he runs right off the road and he's going to lose the position to Marcus Prilwitz who gets through on the inside. And lots of smoke billowing out of the back of Mark Noonan's Scania. Steven Zammett is going to be well placed to dive down the inside into the last corner and in spectacular fashion it's going to be Stephen Zammett who will come through to take what will be his 26th super truck race victory at Wakefield Park. What a dramatic final lap. And Marcus Pruitt gets home in third position but there's some things going on on that last lap that we didn't expect to certainly have turned up for the books couple of trucks having mechanical problems in the dying stages. We saw Frank Amoroso coming into the pits with a lap to go. We saw Mark Noonan's truck coughing and spluttering just one corner left from home. We saw Shannon Smith making a mistake at the fishhook and running off the circuit. And the driver who was able to capitalise and take victory, Stephen Zammett. He adds another race win to his ever-expanding tally. 
coming home just over a second ahead of Mark Noonan. Yeah, Marcus Pulwich, as we said, in third spot. Shannon Smith recovered for fourth. Then it's Lockie Fern, Robbie Fern, Barry Butwell, Frank Amoroso actually rejoined the track. He had an engine cut out, we believe. Mitchell Pruitt's in ninth position, and Mark Schutz was 10th. Well, what can I say? It's probably one of the most exciting races I've been and participated in in a long time. So, mate, credit to um, my team for putting this truck back on the track yesterday. One gearbox, put another front hub, uh, front hub on this just before that race, and uh, I think it was just a matter of biding my time. And, you know, it was just the last corner, last lap, and we took it home. So, pretty happy. Yeah, mate, it's pretty disappointing. We uh, we were definitely everyone's brake marker there coming into the horseshoe, um, but. You know, it is what it is. So if we'll, we'll grin and bear it. It's it's does my head in, but we'll have a, we'll keep having a go. We're going to keep coming at them all day. Those little Izus is a diabolical. I feel sorry for them, but you know, it, it, things were going good for us. But you know, we, we just missed the bickies at the end. To me, I definitely wasn't going to get around the faster guys in front of me. I had to hope that they would, they'd um, you know come to grief, and thankfully they did. From my perspective, I saw Schutz move to the left. He went around 231 and then he went back into the right, but he hadn't actually got past the bloody track first. You know, that is what it is. I'd call that a racing incident. I was really thankful that I found my way through it. I thought I had, you know, enough room to get up the uh, up the middle, but young Loggy Fern, he had better intentions than cutting me off, and then yeah, I was slightly in front of the other one, and he's just hooked up the back of me, and that was the end of the story. I couldn't see there for a while. There was mud and crap flying everywhere. Uh, I was just driving and then all of a sudden uh, Schutze's come up beside me, three wide, and then he's cut in front and I, I saw him suck, got kick out and I was like, no, nah, I'm not powering off here, I can catch this. So I, I did almost catch it, but um, nah, that first corner, buddy, I'll come off the end, but that's all. This time we also had some sort of electrical fault, because as I come into the fish hook, I think Shannon actually tapped me up the backside and uh, it actually cut out. And I, I rolled off into pit lane thinking there's something wrong with it. And all of a sudden it's actually followed back up. So I've shut up pit lane and gone back racing again. But otherwise I was in contention to actually win that one. That was one of the most entertaining and action-packed super truck races we've seen for quite some time. And there's good news. There's still more to come. The feature race, the Super Free is coming up after the break. Watching the opening round of the 2022 High Tech Oils Australian Super Truck Nationals Lockie Mansell along with Gary O'Brien talking you through all of the action from Wakefield Park. We're setting up for the feature race of the weekend. The 10 lap Super Pre, for which three positions will be determined based on a full inversion of qualifying results, Gary. Well, I'm still getting over the last race. It was certainly exciting and this one should be just the same considering that we're going to have another reverse grid affair. A few of the drivers, I think, are still getting over the last race as well, Gary. A few of the trucks sporting a bit of battle damage. You can see there's a big shark bite out of the front left-hand corner of Mark Schutz's Isuzu. And he will be the driver who will start on pole position for this race. And he'll be hoping that he doesn't get squeezed off the road like he did in the previous encounter. Yeah, and there was also damage on the front of Mitchell Prilwitz's truck as well. The Isuzu not sporting any bumper at this stage, so obviously uh, they've had to make some hasty repairs to that one. So it's Izuzu's once again occupying positions one, two and three on the grid. Marcus Prillwitz out of fourth position, back to Robbie Fern. Frank Amoroso in fifth, then it's Mark Noonan, Barry Butwell, and then the two trucks that have been duking it out right throughout the weekend. Stephen Zammett and Shannon Smith starting at the rear of the field. So we've got shoots off the front of the grid, Pruitt's in behind him, he's got some damage as well, but shoots who got the great start last time out, will be hoping that he gets the same this time, we won't have anybody to worry about getting uh, past him. But that damage on the front of Mark Schutz's eyes, Zuzu, I think you'll find that that's just cosmetic damage, so hopefully it doesn't impede the performance of his truck too much, but set for 10 laps to round out the opening round of Super Truck Racing here at Wakefield Park. 
Isuzu's on the front row though they're looking to hold up the bigger super trucks for as long as they can in this race as we get proceedings underway and it's Mark Schutz with the whole shot Lachlan third into second position Sun leads farther in terms of the Prilwitz battle for the time being, but Marcus will be looking to make the move on Mitchell up the hill. Lachlan Fern getting shuffled down high and wide at turn two, and Mark Schutz, much better start for him this time, has a commanding lead over the rest of the field as they negotiate their way through the top end complex. He bolted away from the start, Prilwitz in second as Marcus Prilwitz, of course, in the Max Superliner, and then we go back to this on board from uh, Marcus Pruitt's in the number 31 truck and already setting uh, a good pace as he leads uh, the second of the Isuzu's. Marcus Prilwitz's Max Superliner has driven through a fully manual gearbox. A lot of the other trucks have got automatic oh. transmissions as we see Mark Noonan trying to go around the outside of Lachlan Fern and making a bit of contact. Frank Hammeroso says thank you very much and slips up the inside of both those trucks on the exit of the official almost slips past him because uh, at the moment it's Lockie Ferns on the preferred line going into turn 10 and may hold on to it though it's a bit of a log jam behind him at the moment isn't it Lockie? Well I had to sort of just make sure we weren't going back to the start because the two by two formations through turn 10 it looks like they're lining up for the rolling start once again as we see a lead change on down to turn two Marcus Prilwitz muscles Mark Schutz out of the way and goes through to the lead. And what sort of a save did uh, young Schutz have there going into that corner? He almost lost it, got it back, almost drifting away his way around the corner. Here we have Lockie Fern on board in the Isuzu, number 32. He's keeping a watchful eye <laughs> on that rear vision mirror. <laughs> He's looking everywhere, isn't he? He's looking up at the rear view mirror. He's looking out the left-hand side as well. And that's why, because he had Barry Butwell alongside him, got muscled off the road. And it's Shannon Smith who's run off as well up the top of the circuit. So a bit of drama here of some of these faster trucks that have started further down the field and trying to round up the slower runners. Well, that could be a determining factor before the end of this race with Smith off the road and Samet in a much happier position further up the field it could well determine who wins this round. Indeed it could because they're the two trucks that have been battling it out right throughout the weekend. They finished first and second in races one and two. Stephen Zammett took the ascendancy in race three and once again it's Zammett who's made very efficient work of rounding up some of his rivals and he's already up inside the top four positions. The next driver that he'll be looking to overtake will be Frank Amoroso and his old sparring partner. Yeah, they've actually uh, got quite a gap between them and getting up to the next truck on the, on the way. And I think that was uh, Robbie Fern in the white and further up the road. It's a, it's a white truck, obviously, but it is a white. And here we see Samet making the move on Amoroso up the hill, although he has the preferred line into the next corner. And Frank's got eyes forward. He's not looking around to see who's beside him, is he? No, he, he was completely focused on where he was going. He didn't even glance to the right then when Stephen Zammett pulled up alongside on the run up the hill as, oh no, that's Mark Schutz. Dramas for our early race leader. And it looks like there might be some mechanical problems with his Isuzu. He's had an intercooler hose come up already. He's been involved in a big incident in race three and probably hasn't been the greatest weekend of all time. It could be that his eyes is sporting a bit of residual damage from that incident in race three. Zamet finally gets the move done on Amoroso at turn 10. So that'll be Zamet up into what would be third position. And now he's going to have to put his head down and punch out some quick lap times because Marcus Prilwitz has extended a fair old advantage over the rest of the field. Here's another look at that move for the lead that Amoroso, uh, sorry, that Prilwitz made on Mark Schutz at turn two. And like you identified, Gary, a big save there from Mark Schutz controlling the slide on the exit of the corner. Yeah, and yeah, you can see four-wheel drift all the way through turn two, gets it back underway. Here we see it from his perspective. <laughs> and I think he may have been a, have an exclamation about uh, the move made or his lack of track space left. On board with Stephen Zammett, who is 
now hunting down at second place Robbie Fern. Been a, a bit of a quiet weekend so far from Robbie Fern. Hasn't really featured among the top placings in any of the races, which is a bit of a surprise because we've seen that he's won races and rounds at Wakefield Park in the past. Speaking of which, there he is, and that gap has been negated quite substantially by Zamet after he got past Amoroso. And you can see, but as you say, Lockie, uh, Lock Robbie Fern hasn't shown the form that we've seen previously. We know that the truck's fast. It was formerly owned and campaigned by John Fork and had quite a lot of success in truck racing. As you can see, Zamet already is starting to line him up out of turn two. Loose is a bit on the uh, initial drag off the corner. But then I think Zamet uh, seems to be a bit stronger up through this top part of the track. So Zamet will be looking to get past Robbie Fern as quickly as he can because then he'll need to set his sights on Marcus Prillwitz who's built up quite a handy lead over the rest of the field. We've seen that Marcus Prillwitz is another driver who has had a race win at Wakefield Park in the past. Fern on the defensive heading down into the official drives it down the inside of the road. So no overtaking opportunity for Stephen Zavitt through there on that occasion. Yeah, not that they need an opportunity in a lot of cases because they do tend to make their own way. And here he is starting to line him up. That run from turn nine to turn 10, not quite close enough on this occasion. Now he goes for that uh, late entry, tight exit and try and run up the inside of him. On board with Robbie Fern in the Volvo looking back towards the pit wall seeing where he would be not even looking to see if Zamet's gone past him or not, although I think we can hear it. Oh, he's not close enough to be that. So Fern had to pace down the straight, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, Volvo's got good engine performance, and we see as well out of turn number two that it's equal to the task of Stephen Zamet's Kenworth. So very good straight line performance from Robbie Fern's machine, and this is probably taking Stephen Zamet a bit longer to find a way past than he might have been expecting. Well, he only seems to be stronger up this side of the track rather than the bottom end of the track, where we have those two straights from 9 to 10 and then from 10 back down to 1. And maybe try and get him under brakes if he gets close enough again. In the meantime, Marcus Brewitz is uh, going gangbusters down in front. He doesn't want to get caught. So they exit the tight corner down at the, the gurgler or the fish hook, is it like we called, or there's a new name for it, isn't there now? Well, Mark Noonan described it as the horseshoe <laughs> in the previous race. It's a, a unique description, but I suppose it makes sense when you think about the shape of the corner. So here again, we just see that uh, Fern has been able to get away from Zamet out of turn 10, which is a bit of a surprise. Speaking of Mark Noonan, there he is on screen at the moment. He's attacking the back of Barry Butwell. That's the contest for positions five and six in the race. Shannon Smith sporting some damage to that left front guard and bonnet area, or one piece of course. It just falls forward whenever they want to work on the engines. Looking out the back of Barry Butwell's Max Superlider back at Mark Noonan, who's um, been unlucky, should have possibly won that earlier race. They do run very large capacity engines, these super trucks, ranging from 11 to 14 litres, or turbocharged diesel motors, and they produce around 1,500 horsepower. Now, Zamet having another shot at Fern. Now gets the over and under working here, but Fern is trying to cover the line. He's sort of leaving some room, but not a lot. And there's nothing that Samet can do about it. Again, to try and run down the inside, but in previous attempts here, Fern has been able to drive away from him out of that corner. He's getting very good drive out of the slower corners, Robbie Fern. Stephen Zamet, I still feel, is probably a bit better through the corners and under brakes, but Robbie Fern certainly has the exit drive and the top end speeds to be able to keep Zammer at bay. And uh, if they're not careful, they're, they're actually this battling between Fern and Zammer. It's going to invite some other contenders into the mix because both Frank Amoroso and Shannon Smith are not too far away. So very shortly, this could become a four-way dice 
for second position. Well, Frank Amoroso with a drama. Out of turn three up to four. That uh, can work and he's, he's switched off by a little bit there, so definitely uh, a lack of power there. Oh, he's got, a, got it back a little bit now, but I think he's conceded that this one's done. Well, we heard that there were some electrical issues with that truck in the previous race, and you'll remember, Gary, that he had to make an unscheduled pit stop because the engine was cutting out, so it could be that it's a reoccurrence of those issues. Marcus Burwitz still has a handy lead here as he goes down past the, the start-finish line to begin the ninth lap, and Burns still has command over Zammett for second position. Barry Butmore currently running in fourth and the truck still going through a development stage now that they've gone back to that single turbo setup. Stephen Zammett's going to get around Robbie Fern. You get the feeling that he's going to have to make a fairly assertive move under brakes somewhere, maybe into the fish hook or maybe into turn number 10. He's just going to have to send it because we see that Robbie Fern's truck's very strong coming out of turn 10 and coming out of turn 2, so I think Zammett's going to have to really go for a big dive if he wants to get ahead. So he had a look, quick look down the outside, now try to swing back on the inside, but that's not going to work, although he try and get alongside. This is the hard part here because he won't have the line into the turn 9 corner. And Robbie Fern just eyes forward, not even bothering to look to see if he's been attacked or whatever. He's covered to the inside there. You can see Stephen Zammett ranging up on the outside. Here comes Marcus Prilwitz to commence what will be the final lap of this race. He's got his young son, Mitchell Prilwitz, who is about to go a lap down. And Robbie Fern, once again, has managed to keep Stephen Zammett at bay. And Shannon Smith has closed right in. So just as we predicted, it's invited another play into this contest. So it's going to be a three-way battle for second position heading into the final lap. This could well decide who wins the round as well. If Smith should get past Sammet, then I suspect that uh, Smith will probably take the round. At this stage, he hasn't been able to do it. And Burn has been held on gamely, considering that he didn't have the, the competition at the top of the track, but certainly down the bottom he does. He's been doing a bit bit of quick mental arithmetic here Gary and I've worked out that Stephen Zammett has to get ahead of Robbie Fern to be short of the round win if he stays where he is or if Shannon Smith gets past then it will be Smith that takes overall honours for the weekend so Stephen Zammett if he wants to emerge victorious in the round he's going to have to go for a big send oh a big moment there that's Mitchell Prilwitz and I think yes Robbie Fern might have just lifted off the accelerator there when that Izuzu got sideways in front of him. Zammett took the advantage, slipped down the inside, and that elevates Zammett into a round winning position, but it's going to be Marcus Prilwitz who takes out the Super Pre at Wakefield Park. And it's a drag race to the line. Robbie Fern hasn't given up, but Stephen Zammett just holds him out. So it'll be Zammett who comes home second in the race, first overall for the round. Robbie Fern finishing up in position number three ahead of Shannon Smith, who will take runner-up honours for the weekend. And uh, it hasn't ended well for young Lockie Fern. Looks like that uh, Isuzu has done an engine. Yeah, it's expired in spectacular circumstances, so an unfortunate DNF inside of the chequered flag for Lachlan Fern. That's a great shame. Look at the amount of smoke and steam that that truck's puffing out. Confirmation of your race results, though. And it's Marcus Prilwitz who gets the win about seven seconds in the end. So a commanding margin back to Stephen Zammett with Robbie Fern, Shannon Smith, Mark Noonan, Barry Butwell and Mitchell Prilwitz rounding out the finishes. Lachlan Fern, Frank Amoroso and Mark Schultz failing to make it to the checkered flag. The whole weekend is, uh, wasn't going my way at the start. Shannon really pulled his truck out of the out of the shed, mate. And it's absolutely cracking. It's, it's so far. So um, we got to the reverse grid races and, mate, Absolutely, um, mate. It was probably the two best races I've ever done in my whole career. So, mate, to come through the pack of 10 trucks again, and um, it was the last lap, last corner, and in the last 10 lap race, I was managing water temperature, and you would have probably seen that I was just hanging in there with uh, Fernie, and I seen Shannon coming to my meals. I thought, I've got to do it, I've got to do it now. So, mate, 
come out with a second for the last race and put a nice little move there with, the, with his, him and his son in the middle. So it's a bit, a bit hairy, but I got there in the end. It's good racing there today. It's, uh, just, we sort of had the truck set up for the wet weather and, and um, sort of attempted to change it, but at the end of the day, we just um, didn't have time. So, but um, there, credit to Steve, he did well. Got it going after his blue gearbox, so yeah. Considering we had such a bad start to the weekend, on, on, on Friday practice, the truck was too noisy, so we couldn't get out on the track all day. Um, we got we expressed some muffles up from Melbourne to quieten it down, so we only really got, uh, the first time we went out on the track was, uh, you know, the warm-up for Saturday morning uh, before qualifying. I then blew a boost hose in qualifying on the first lap, so I qualified really badly, uh, 4.7. Um, yeah, so to be at this end of the field is remarkable. Confirmation of your series standings after the opening round, and it's Stephen Zammett who leads, but it's tight. Only two points separating him and Shannon Smith at the top of the leaderboard. Mark Noonan sits in third position overall after a consistent weekend. A great gesture there from Stephen Zammett presenting his round winning trophy to his uncle who is quite ill. So, lovely gesture there from Steve. There are our three podium place getters for the weekend. What an action packed weekend of super truck racing to kick off the season 2022. And guess what? There'll be plenty more action to come when the trucks are back on track in July for round number two of the championship of Winton Motor Raceway. Hope you've enjoyed all of the action from the season opener for the High Tech Oils Australian Super Truck Nationals of Wakefield Park. On behalf of Gary O'Brien, I'm Lockie Mansell. See you next time.